Hey guys, it's Link. Our friends at Emma asked me to show you this. It's a brand new, all acrylic metallic colors set from Ammo in one convenient box. I've tested a bunch of the colors for you and made my Orc Flyer look like this. Let me show you how. Very importantly, let's always make sure to give these paints a very good shake until we can hear the ball bearing inside shaking about. You can hear when it releases. Let's paint some Warhead metallic blue into the center of the dark splotches that we've prepared earlier. Again, I promise I'll do another video for you on my channel to show you how I did this previous step. I don't want you to get lost. Now this paint I found goes on a little bit better if we do it slightly thicker than with usual thin acrylic painting. So I kind of step it on in small splotches with this size one brush from Leon Hardy. Here's a good example on the side of the muffler where I've got a touch of water in the paint. So the paint is maybe 75% paint to water and I've applied it in a slightly wet base coat here along the side. And it's gone on really well and it dries and flattens down very nicely. A little texture is okay. It will help the rust effect. For our next color, let's use some bluish titanium. Now I wanted to maybe use silver, but it looks quite harsh against the warhead blue. So a continuation of the blue theme sounded really cool to me and it turns out well. You can see I've added a touch of water to slightly thin the paint and then I'm painting it onto the exhaust system here. This paint gave me a bit of a surprise. You can see how bright and reflective it is there. And that's just with one thin coat. I definitely will be using this bluish titanium in the future again for metallic effects. It's really cool. After working through the same processes for a few more minutes, I've thickened up both the blue warhead and bluish titanium paints to get it into a finish like this. I'm both very happy and actually quite surprised about the awesome finish that I could develop with these paints. I will definitely use this combination again in the future. I love it. Next, let's add some effects with gunmetal. I feel that this is a must have in your metallics arsenal of paints to use. It's quite dark. So here I am uh, using a nice medium size flat brush to apply it over a flat black base coat. And I'm painting against the run of the model, uh, against the longitudinal axis, if that makes sense, to, to create cool vectors uh, going across. Now I could mask and airbrush this step, but I do like uh, hand painting, so I airbrush the main colors, but these steps, I'm very happy to, to hand paint them and they go on very well. It reminds me a little bit of the old classic Citadel bolt gun metal, maybe just a little bit darker. It's a good combination of black and silver for very realistic effects for gun metal. This one was very exciting for me. It's the first time for me to use metallic red. So it's an experiment and I tested it out by first applying flat red on the missile cone here and then simply hand painting the metallic red over the top. As I wanted the effect to be quite glossy, I painted this on a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker than usual and uh, the self leveling properties took care of it and it dried flawlessly. Most impressed with this one. I got so excited that I decided to paint all of the red parts in this metallic red. It's got a beautiful sheen to it. So these cables underneath the orc flyer as well. It looks really awesome, right? Here's one of those times where you make a small mistake and it ends up being very cool for the model. I'm using here a uh, jet exhaust burnt iron and it's a really cool brown, uh, you know, burnt like the name suggests kind of metallic dark color. And initially I decided to only paint it on the very end of the nozzle here and uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the engine part was going to be in gunmetal. What I found though, uh, in subsequent steps after filming was that I then repainted this over the top of the gunmetal and that looked way better. Uh, you'll see that in the finished model. I wanted to offer this information to you so that you have a choice of options when using the burnt iron color. It goes over black very well, but also with an undercoat of say gunmetal, the effect is very cool as well. 
it tends to shine through just a little bit and self highlight the, uh, the burnt iron going over the top. So I'll definitely do that for next time. I also used it here and it's a single coat over black to paint the, uh, the rocket engines and the uh, exhaust nozzles on these missile launchers on the wingtips. Next I had the idea to use copper for some places on the model that should be exposed to extreme heat and as a nice color, an orangey uh, metallic color to balance against the blue metallic details added so far. Same as before, with a slightly damp brush, add a drop of water, mix the paint well, and then test it on some paper, say kitchen paper like this, before applying it to your model. You want to make sure it's the right consistency and the paint is looking good. Then I simply painted it onto this, I guess it's a coolant ring or maybe even afterburner input that would be very hot around the engine nozzles here, the rocket nozzle. As you can see, this copper paint goes on really, really well. Uh, I only needed one to two coats for very good coverage and a very bright and solid copper effect. In a similar way to the blue metallic details on the top of the model, I've got three points visible, usually at one time, that help the audience's eye to move around the model. Doing that in a similar way on the underside here, this gun cannon detail, I've also added it in copper. Now stop everything. Why is Ammo by MiG Steel not more famous? That's what I want to know. This one, look at how it goes on. This is a single coat over a black base and boom. I mean, it, it, it brushes perfectly and the coverage is just amazing. And uh, look at the steel uh, shine effect on it. I mean, I was really blown away by this one. It reminds me of the old Citadel Mithril Silver. You remember that one? Such a classic. It's like that, but the coverage is better and the opacity is better. Super impressed with this one. Um, I used it in, then in a bunch of places. I decided this would be, you know, for two reasons. It's a really good sheen and color. Uh, it's a nice, you know, it's a neutral color that I, I think I'll do uh, rust washes over uh, as, a, as a subsequent step, but because it handled so well, I wanted to keep using it. So all of the places now that had not yet been done with metallic, I hit them with this ammo by MIG steel. It's really, really awesome. Even for fine detail work here, this is not a particularly sharp brush. It's that size one from Leon Hardy, but look how cleanly it goes on here. Beautiful, be handles beautifully. Really impressed with this steel color. I know I'm breaking a bunch of rules about, you know, building up with the thin coats, etc. But look, that's how it worked. Uh, there's no trickery here. It's a touch of water, uh, carefully placed on. You know, I'm being neat with a, a size one brush and done. Okay, let's do some final highlighting and dry brushing with silver. This is the one. When it first started coming out, I thought, oh, what's happening? This is quite thin. Then, as I touched a, a flat. Uh, sable brush into it that I'm going to use for dry brushing. I thought, oh, this is very thin, but look how shiny that is on the uh, on the paper. So I thought, okay, let's test it out. Um, this is over a, uh, a previous dry brush of gunmetal. And wow, look at the impact. You can see it's so bright and shiny. So I tried to get more of it off my brush. It, it feels like there's nothing on the paper. It seems like it's all off, but the effect from this is outstanding as a highlight and dry brushing paint. I was really, really impressed with it. Using a very quick back and forth motion here, you can see it picking up the details of the raised edges and it's very powerful and works as a wonderful highlight and it saved me a lot of time. Same again here, but watch this. Look how it's immediately picking up all of the wonderful raised details here. And uh, this is over a gunmetal base again and it just looked fantastic. A quick word on technique, I'm mostly applying the paint in a downward stroke to simulate a lighting effect. Thanks guys, I hope you liked it. Please subscribe.